Hello, welcome to Meet the Thriller Author, a podcast that features interviews with authors of mysteries, thrillers, and suspense novels. My name is Alan Peterson, and I am your host. I am also an author of thrillers, and that is why when I decided to start a podcast where I would be interviewing uh, fellow authors, I decided to focus on the genre that I write in and that I love, which is the uh, thriller genre. And for simplicity's sake, by thrillers here, I'm talking about uh, books that you would find in Amazon's mystery, thriller, and suspense uh, category, as well as its subcategories of crime fiction, uh, such as uh, police procedurals, um, psychological thrillers, espionage, uh, those type of novels. These are the authors that you'll be meeting during this podcast. Okay, so uh, with that out of the way, stay tuned for the latest episode of Meet the Thriller Author. Hey everybody, this is Alan Peterson with Meet the Thriller Author. And in this uh, episode of the podcast, we'll be meeting award-winning and best-selling author Jennifer Chase, who writes the Emily Stone thrillers, uh, other thrillers, but uh, that's... Uh, she has uh, several books in the uh, Emily Stone series, and excited to have her here on the show. Uh, thanks for being on the podcast, Jennifer. Thank you for having me, Alan. For uh, uh, readers who aren't familiar with uh, who you are, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, please? Sure. Uh, my name is Jennifer Chase, of course, and I write uh, the Emily Stone series. And I also have a background in, uh, I'm a criminologist, I have a background in uh, forensics and in criminology. So that's kind of, that's helped me, uh, I see things a little bit differently. So I uh, created this series um, out of actually my own personal experience I had. I actually did have a real textbook psychopath who lived next door to me. So from that situation, actually something good does come out of something kind of terrifying. So I came up with the Emily Stone series, and she's a little bit different type of character. She's not your typical detective or FBI agent. She's actually what I call a vigilante detective, and she hunts down serial killers and um, also child uh, abductors. And she does this all anonymously. Yeah, that's a, that's a big difference with your book. Like you said, most books in that genre, are, they're actually detectives or FBI agents. I really like the part that she's kind of like playing on her own rules, like for real. <laughs> right. She does have a background. She was a cop at one time, so she does have a background and uh, for... I won't give anybody any spoilers, but for whatever reasons, she um, actually quit the force and she still wanted to um, help the police and find serial killers. And so she assists the police without them knowing who she is. And it gets pretty dicey sometimes. Yeah, and I was going to say your background is uh, incredible with your uh, education and your real hands-on experience. I mean, that's kind of, um, you know, most of us, when we write, we have to, like, really do a lot of research and, and, and check out these places online and try to interview experts like yourself. So do you find that it's easier? I don't want to say easier, but how do you find that uh, in your writing? Well, you some things are a little bit easier because I know them, but also at the same time, there's so many little aspects. So I do, st- I still do some research. And uh, I know a fair amount of people in the law enforcement community. So if there's something that just recently I had to ask someone who uh, knew a lot about the coroner's job, and there was some things that I wasn't sure about. So I still, I still do my research, but it doesn't. I, it's in my comfort zone, I think. I think that's what helps. I feel like I'm in my comfort zone when I'm writing fiction. And it probably writes, brings a real realism to it, since you know the you have the educational background compared to a lot of. Writers. It helps. It it does. It really helps. And um, of course, then having that imagination is sometimes I have to kind of reel myself in and not get too uh, too out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's going to be an interesting balance because you have the uh, the educational background, but then again, it is fiction, and so you know you'd have to be exciting and thrilling and all that. So it's kind of that must be an interesting balance for you. <laughs> yeah, there's there's that artistic bit. I mean, you still want to you know follow things like procedural wise and and what goes on, like say at a police department and what they do when they investigate a case and. You know, they're the things that they, uh, you know, have to deal with from everything from lack of staff and, and politics and everything else. I try to keep that along the line of, of realism, but, you know, there's that artistic quality you got to throw in there. Well, why do you write thrillers? Uh, do, you, do you enjoy reading them? I, you know, it's always been my favorite. I just, I've always gravitated. I've always liked mysteries. And the thriller part, I think, you know, I've been such a big fan of, 
I hate to admit the the 80s action film, 80s 90s action films. I just I can't get enough of them. So I think it's that balance between mystery and and the 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 thrillers, the movie thrillers. And how long have you been writing? I've been writing most of my life, but actually seriously, you know, writing books. Uh, I published my first book in 2008. And I actually thought about it for a long time. It was the first Emily Stone uh, thriller called Compulsion. You know, I've, I've written short stories. I've written screenplays. I did a lot of screenwriting early on. And I think that that has actually helped me as a writer. People ask me about that all the time because, you know, writing a screenplay is very, very different. But you have to really focus in and hone in on your on your action and your dialogue. So... I think that's really influenced my style of writing. Yeah, I've heard that from other uh, um, authors who've uh, started out writing screenplays and then switched over to writing uh, novels. And yeah, I never tried to write a screenplay, but it sounds like you really, yeah, to, to get the dialogue and get things, get, keep things moving on. Looks like it's a very good uh, uh, educational background to have. Well, and I think it helps with your storyline. Sometimes you, if you don't have your storyline really you know, fleshed out and you know exactly what's going on. I think, you know, the screenwriting, you have to be very specific because you only have a certain amount of time that you're telling the story. And I think it does help. It helps you kind of get more organized. Do you still write screenplays or are you focusing on your novels? I'm definitely focusing on my novels. I mean, I love screenplays and movies and uh you know, I'm hoping down the road I would love to be uh, writing an Emily Stone screenplay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you never know. The Gone Girl. What was the name of the G- Gillian? I can't remember the name of the author of uh, Gone Girl. She did a great job uh, adapting her own novel. Right. Yes, and that can happen. And you know, uh, and it's it's the same way with books. You know, all the indie books becoming very popular. It's the same with mm-hmm. um, indie movies. They're just they're out there and in full force. It's not like a bad thing having an indie film, just like, you know, as far as indie books. So there's a lot of opportunities, so you never know. I think you'll be seeing more authors, you know, having their books, you know, adapted into screenplays, whether they do it themselves or somebody from a production company will adapt it. But I think you're going to be seeing more. I really do. Yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, it's exciting times, for, that's for sure, for the in the indie world. And yeah, you're right, movies, music, everything. It's really everything. Exciting. You know, and it is, there's more opportunity out there, and it's just amazing to look back at, you know, just what was going on, like, say, 2000, and what the opportunities compared to are, are now. It's amazing. And that's really exciting because you, you're you not in that. You don't have, like, okay, well, this is all you can earn, or this is all you can do. It's just, I think it's whatever you want it to be. And so who are some of your favorite uh, thriller authors, and did they influence your writing? I think they do. Uh, I, you know, I try not to. I don't want to copy anybody, but I definitely there's some awesome, awesome authors. Uh, I actually got to meet one of my favorite, which is Jeffrey Deaver. He's. I'm actually reading one of his books now. I love people like Baldacci and Dean Koontz, and of course Lee Child. Anything where there's you know that thriller element to it. But I don't just read thrillers. I do like good old fashioned cozy mysteries, and occasionally I read something uh, maybe in a sci-fi. I like horror. It's something I might think about down the road, more of the paranormal horror. So, you know, I have to pick read a Stephen King once in a while. Yeah, yeah it is good when, if, you're, if, you're writing, if you're writing thrillers and you're reading thrillers, like I said, you might need a break and just kind right. of read other genres as well. <laughs> Sometimes I just like to pick up just a really fun, cozy mystery, you know, where yeah. there's, yes, there's a dead body and there's an investigation, but it's just more fun. There's just so many great books out there like that. Yeah, yeah, I, I get those kicks too. Like I went uh, last year, I got an Agatha Christie. We're going way back. Oh, <laughs> aren't they fantastic to go back yeah. and read? I hadn't read them since I was a kid, and I'm like, these are these are really good. these are still really good. <laughs> like it's amazing. Definitely, I and mean, it's interesting up. to read all the different styles, you know, and how that is so timeless. Really, her style. So, uh, what inspired you to write your first book? Well, I have to say that my psychopathic neighbor was the one who inspired me. <laughs> no, so, so that, that's a, well, it ended up as a good thing, but sure, it doesn't sound like it started like a good thing. Well, I started, you know, I learned a lot from the situation, not only kind of what, um, well, basically I met everybody at my police department, but um, other than that, I started learning, of, that's when I first started getting really interested in kind of the criminal mind, and at that time... When, where this took place, there wasn't a lot of things on television like you see now. There was a, I think there was one show at the time that I just, I just thought, well, this is so fascinating, and so it did propel me to go back to school, 
And it's like, I'm just loving this stuff, you know. So actually, he that helped. So I started creating this character. A lot of people said, oh, you should write about your experiences. And I'm like, well, I don't know if that's so exciting. I don't know if that's a whole story. But in my first book, Compulsion, there are a couple little things in there that were actually true to life. So I'll let readers figure that out. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know what it is about the state that we live in, California, but it seems there's a lot of psychos and serial killers that are <laughs> that have a history in California. I, I, I know. Well, you know, there's a lot of people. Always, that's true. Just statistically speaking. Yeah. <laughs> just the size of it. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> but uh, that's what makes it such a great, you know, backdrop for my Emily Stone series. I have been thinking about, wow, it'd be really great to have her in another location, like even, you know, in Europe or just somewhere else, you know. So I've been kind of kind of thinking about that a little bit. She's gotten away with in, in Dark Mind. She uh, was over in Kauai. So that was really fun and, to write. And where does the, where does the, uh, her, the stories take place usually for her? Is she... Usually in California, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, sometimes, uh, in fact, the one I'm writing now, you know, she's, kind of breaking the California boundaries a little bit and going into Arizona and places like that. So plenty oh, to keep no. her busy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How, how many books do you have in that series now? Uh, I have uh, five and I will be six pretty soon. And oh, I did start okay. a new, another series as well. Been busy, not writing as much as some authors do, but I'm, I'm working on it. And uh, is the new series that you're working on, is it like totally separate from Emily Stone's world or are they kind of... In yes, it is. Um, it's still in the same type of genre, but it's more, it's more of a forensic mystery. And uh, mm. the main character is definitely the opposite of Emily Stone, where she'll go in and start, you know, kicking butt. He's a, actually a forensic scientist. So, you know, he's a little bit different. Uh, I've been having a lot of fun with that. That was just released a couple of months ago called Body of the Crime. People seem to be really liking it. He's a different kind of character. You know, he's, he's kind of like a real character and he's, you know, put in these more extraordinary circumstances. And that's what makes it fun to write thrillers. I'm looking at your Amazon page. I didn't realize it was already published. Yeah, it's exciting. So, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I've been thinking about it for a while, too. I kind of think about characters for a while and, and all the different... It's like I do a profile on my own characters is essentially what I do. And, <laughs> and I'm thinking, okay, well, how can I, you know, really incorporate them in a story that would be fun for people and still have, a you know, a thriller mystery element to it so what's your process well like where do you get your ideas from oh my gosh there you know once you start writing if you write anything you'll find that for me it's not so much what you see like on tv or in the headlines it's just little little ideas will come to me um usually when i'm somewhere when i least expect i could be out hiking somewhere or walking my dog on the beach or and certain ideas i'll see something and and it triggers you know, it triggers an idea. I could see a person or a car drive away or just a weird property location with a rundown house. And I start thinking, <laughs> you know, things just kind of kind of escalate from there. I try to come up with different, not so much different types of serial killers, but just, you know, I, I work on their on their criminal psychological makeup a, a, quite a bit. So I'm thinking, you know, what's this person's background and you know, I have quite a bit of notes on that. So certain things will trigger it. Not that I run around seeing serial killers. It's just certain <laughs> behaviors and things will kind of, you know, give me some ideas. So you, like, uh, have, like, a notepad with you all the time? Or you, like, or... or a little. I at least phone. have a small one. Yeah, because yeah, there's nothing worse. It's like, okay, I'm in the grocery store. It's like, oh, yeah, that would be great. I got to write it down. <laughs> so, <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, I try to have something I can write on or at least just jot down a couple of words to remind me. You know, it's like if you're in bed and you wake up early in the morning and you think of a, a scene and it's like, okay, I'll remember that when I get up. And you you don't remember it entirely. So I try to make sure I have something to uh, write down or at least send myself a text or something. <laughs> yeah, I learned that the hard way, too, about doing that. So now, yeah, if, if something wakes me up, I'm, I'll immediately like, I'll write it down. <laughs> you have to because you think, oh, yeah, I'll remember that. Or it could be a name. It could be a scene. It could be an idea for another book. And then you're like, I can't remember. It's so funny how that works. Some people I know, I know a couple people that have a little, they record it, you know, a little mini mm -hmm. recorder. So they don't. Yeah, have I've done that before with my. Yeah, I've done that before with my phone. That little memo thing. Yes. Does that work? 
Yeah, yeah, it works. Yeah, I, I uh, sometimes I forget about it though. <laughs> so writing it, it works a little bit better for me. If I record it, it kind of becomes kind of like a dream. And then I'm like, oh wait. And then I go look at the memos, and I have like five of them in there. So. <laughs> yeah, but no, yeah, that's yeah. a good idea. Uh, yeah, it works. Out, it works out pretty good, especially with names too. If I see a name that really like, oh, that's a cool name. Uh, you know, I'll 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 make a recording. You find it's hard to come up with all your names. Is is uh, for some reason naming characters. You know, besides the main character, it's tough for me, and I yeah, find no, myself, I find myself, okay, well, that's kind of boring. I, I'm going down this boring road, so I, I picked up this little paperback book, and it had baby names in it. <laughs> so I yeah. thought, oh wow, that'll help, and because uh, sometimes you just kind of get in a, you know, get in a rut with names. Sometimes you feel like you're, like you said, you're being too boring, too generic, or then sometimes I go overboard and I'm being too, you know. <laughs> over the top. Right, exactly, exactly. You don't want to, want to sound too, somewhere between normal and not too cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> and it's got to fit uh, that character, too. Right, yeah, that's important. I spent too. a long time trying to come up with Emily Stone, and I had all these names. It's like she has to have one of these wholesome, kind of an old-fashioned name, but not – it, it took me a while. I had a lot of names, and then I had them. I had them stuck up, kind of on the wall, and even on the fridge. And I was trying to come up with the right name, and it did. It took a while. But when it clicked, it was like, okay, it has to be three syllables, and then the last name has to be one. You know, it was just it's yeah. kind of like a it's kind of like a piece of music or something. My first book, I had I was using one name, and then like halfway through, I'm like, you know, I I started just thinking about another one, and I ended up changing it. It's like yeah. sort of replace all, but uh, I could change it mid midway. Yeah, sometimes you don't know until you really get into the story. Even if you have mm-hmm. an outline, you don't know. It's like, no, oh, this doesn't seem right, and you do have to end up changing or changing a place or whatever it is, a name. So now, are there any similarities between you and uh, and Emily Stone? I mean, <laughs> I mean, not well, the Monty part, maybe. <laughs> she's she's definitely smarter and tougher than I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think all of us. There's a little tiny bit. There's a little bit of Emily Stone in all of us. I always say that. You know, it's like the person. I wish there was somebody out there like that. What about your family and friends? Do they ever, any part of them ever make it into your books and they notice? <laughs> Usually my characters are combinations. Um, I have mm-hmm. a, a supporting character who, who makes his way in and out some of the, uh, some of the books. Um, and he's kind of an annoying character, but he's, he's intelligent, but he's one of these type of people that just pretty much says what's on their mind. And I've worked with some people like this before, so there there are combos. Um, some of the police officers and detectives I've met, they're, um, I wouldn't say any of the characters are them, but a combination of, you know, there's certain mannerisms and things that when you start meeting a lot of police officers who's worked homicides and, and different parts of the department, they they have certain ways they talk and, and mannerisms and, and um, so I use those all as my little research, <laughs> little parts. <laughs> and do you, uh, what's your writing process? Do you usually, are you, do you plot in advance or are you just going to go ahead? I do outline. Um, I Actually, one of my books, I actually did an extensive outline and felt like I spent a lot of time doing that. Uh, I didn't need to do as much outlining, but I do outline. I like to know, especially for the middle of the book, I want to make sure that, you know, everything's progressing where it's getting more and more, the stakes are, you know, higher, uh, things are becoming, you know, more exciting. That way I can kind of see it. I'm a very visual person, so um, I don't like to know, I don't want to look at pictures of what my characters look like. That's something that's really difficult. I don't want to do that, but I do kind of map it out. And I have lots of sticky notes on my desk. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Notes. This never go out of fashion. <laughs> yeah. And I do outline, yeah. you know, the chapters. And sometimes they change. It's not like you have to do it this way. Sometimes things will, you know, will go off another way. Um, I can just see it clearer. And do you write in Word or some other? Yes, I do. Software? I write in Word. I know some people use some of these other software to help them, you know, organize everything. And I like I like paper and and Word. It just works for me. And my sticky notes, of course. So what's your what's your writing day like? Well, what I try to do, I, I've tried it many different ways. And what works for me, if I know I have to do something, whether it's a chore or an errand, 
it's hard for me to write first thing in the morning knowing I have to do these things. So I go crazy, get everything done, and I pretty much end up writing uh, all afternoon and sometimes in the evening. So I leave mornings for appointments and errands, and I have to take. I have a pretty high energy dog, so I take him out and training and you know walking and it just gets so when I sit down to write I'm more productive even if I write for only three or four hours there's more I I, there's just more I do knowing that I don't have all those other things hanging over your head that's the tough part of being at home yeah and that's a good idea I just kind of get the errands and yeah, you know, get that all out of the way. And then you can just I used to focus. write in the morning, but I found that I wasn't quite as productive. Some people, you know, are just more alert in the morning, which is true mm-hmm. if you're studying or if you're doing something else. But I just find that I can just, I'm on a relaxed roll knowing that, you know, I've got the groceries in, the dog's tired, you know, the house is clean, and I can just write. And I just, I write yeah. a lot more. Yeah, go do the errands before the traffic gets too bad. And that's the other thing. Anybody who lives in California or any big city, anywhere else, they know it's like the best time to do errands is in the morning is, and earlier yeah. in the week. <laughs> um, uh, do you write every day? I try to. Basically, Monday through Friday. Saturday is I kind of use for looking at what I have to do the next week, if I have to do research or if I'm writing. I do write short stories. Sometimes I just spend fun time doing that, but I do take Sunday off. And what about the other, the the non-writing stuff that's so difficult, so marketing and social media? If you yeah, and I, I try to do that in the mornings as well. And sometimes it ends up on, like I said, Saturday is kind of my catch-all day where it's like, okay, I got my, you know, my word count I wanted for the week, and this is what I need to do for next week. And, yeah, the whole marketing part, I tell you, I <laughs> people don't realize I, that is a lot tougher. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and just having yes. the right balance. And what works for one person may not necessarily work for another. So it's it's kind of, you know, you have to really sit down and, and figure out what you want to do and if you want to spend X amount of money or how much time do you want to do that. Because I would love to spend more time communicating with readers. And I feel really bad that I don't as much as I should because mm-hmm. they are, however, you know, they're gold. <laughs> yeah. why we keep writing so yeah. that's one yeah. thing I haven't quite figured out how to um, manage that time and then you do you have a Facebook page and Twitter account yes I do I have an I, I have an author Facebook page and uh, of course Twitter account and I do have a website blog which you can find everything from that which is author jenniferchase.com Okay, great. And of course, I'll have these on the uh, show notes too for the listeners. And for fun, um, I actually had a production, a small production company, do a actual live um, Emily Stone, you know, book series teaser. So that's oh, also cool. on my like website. It's really oh, fun. Video? I'm oh, sorry, what was that? Awesome. That's just like a video. Uh, they actually shot it. Was a real, real film. It was actually oh, shot wow. here in Bakersfield. It was. Yeah, it gives you a little a feeling of who Emily Stone is. And uh, the actress that played Emily Stone, she's amazing. Her name's Kim Poirier. Some people might know her. She's been in, uh, she's, she's, she's known, she's been in movies. And uh, it was a pretty amazing experience. Oh, that's cool. You were there doing the filming and everything? Uh, actually, I, I, during that time, I was actually really, really sick, and believe me, it's, it's, I wasn't there actually at that um, shooting part of it because it was shot in two different locations. So, mm. But I wrote the script. I wrote a little uh, short script and um, talked with the uh, director of, you know, what you can and can't do and, you know, on the really, really low budget. But it was just amazing how it came out, and and it does give a real flavor of the series. Yeah. With, with that? Yeah, I'm looking forward to to watching that. Yeah, especially it's like, five like, minutes, a five real, minute video. Yeah. Yeah, especially and, with uh, real actors and everything. Yes, you might recognize uh, the person that played Rick in it. He, um, his name is Carlos Alazraki, and he was in Reno 911. Plus, oh, he's an I amazing, love that show. Yeah, he was. Um, he's an amazing. Uh, he does a lot of voices, so he's he's a pretty amazing guy. He did a great job. What gets you gets you motivated to put in the time to keep writing? 
You know, we all have our, our good days and our bad days. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, when I'm really sitting down and writing, I just, I love it and I enjoy it so much and I have so many ideas and it's just, it's, 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 I think it's the whole process. It's, it's great when you have people that are waiting for your books. It's amazing to me that, you know, people are waiting for the next Emily Stone book. It's just so inspiring and, and I just love what I'm doing. And, and when other people enjoy it too, it's like, wow. I mean, that's just a win-win situation. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're working on now? That's I'm working on the next Emily Stone. It is called Dead Cold. And I really don't want to give too much away because I think, it's, uh, She's got another big uh, case, but you can read more about it uh, in the next month or so. I'll be releasing information and when it will be released. And I will be working cool. on uh, the the next um, – in my other series with a forensic scientist, uh, the second book in the series will be out probably not right at the end of the year. It will probably be at the beginning of the year. Next year. And do you write the do you write the two series like at the same time, or do you, do you focus on one and then the I other? I try to focus on one at a time, and I'll be going back and forth. Uh, sometimes things will come to me, and I'll make a lot of notes. And so when when one goes off to the editor, and I don't want to think about it anymore, then I'll start writing the other one. I try not to. I don't want to write two at the same time. Because then it's like, oops, which, wait a minute, wait, who's the bad guy again? <laughs> <laughs> I just like to stay really focused, and um, that's easier for me to do, just on one at a time. So you said you still do find time to read. You were saying, mentioned earlier, like, reading colleges and everything, and but you still also read thrillers? I do. Um, I wish I had more time to read, because usually by the end yeah. of the day or in the <laughs> evening, I'm, I'm pretty tired. My eyes, I get tired. And um, But I am reading uh, Jeffrey Deaver, The Kill Room, is what I'm reading right now. And I do spend time reading other nonfiction things that are mm -hmm. that have to do with um, true crime and things like that. But those you don't have to read, like, from beginning to end, like you do a novel. So I have a lot of books I, you know, my life is books, so what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, um, we'll take uh, uh, any more of your time here. But before I let you go, is there anything else that you'd like to uh, say to our listeners? Just, I really just, especially after this new series, I just really want to thank everyone who's supported me, read my books, who even share my tweets. It's just really been amazing, and I'm very, very thankful. All right, well, thank you, Jennifer. It was a pleasure talking to you, and uh, thank you for uh, telling us about your work and your books. And, and been great having you on. Thank you so much, Alan. It was a pleasure. Thank you for listening to this episode of Meet the Thriller Author. You can uh, learn more about the, this podcast and about future interviews over at the website at uh, www.thrillingreads.com forward slash podcast. And if you haven't done so yet, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to this podcast on iTunes. Uh, you can do it on Stitcher or you can do it uh, by email uh, over at the uh, website. And also, let's invite you to uh, join the mailing list so you never miss an episode. And I'd also like to invite you to visit my author page at uh, Facebook, uh, Alan Peterson Books, and also my website, alanpeterson.com. 